moving on. Larry says, I've heard you talk about ID pages. We've got 30 minutes. I've heard you talk about ID pages before, but I, I, I am unclear about what they are for. Can you explain what they are and how to use them for SEO? It's a great question. So I did a little bit of research earlier today to pull up some resources from many years ago when I kind of was trying to figure out what ID pages were for as well. Um, so guys, ID page, if you do local business uh, schema structured data, or if you're using schema period, you'll see a lot of um, a schema code will have an ID reference, an at ID reference. And what that means is it's a unique resource identifier, unique resource identifier. It's a URI. That's what an ID page is. Um, that essentially is a point of reference. And I'll explain this in a minute because I pulled up some supplemental resources here. But when I... You know, structured data has been schema for local business and such has been around for many years now. It was uh, kind of originally was there was microdata, which was kind of a way to do structured data via like HTML elements. So you could mark up a page with structured data, but it was um, it was done like in the main content body of the page using uh, um, microdata, which is again, it's is, is an HTML markup. OK, uh, but then when it switched to JSON LD. So now we add the code up in the you know heads. It can be anywhere on the page really, but we usually put it in the head section of the page. That's when an add ID field started to appear. At least that's when I started noticing it. And for for several years, I didn't know what the hell it was for, and I, I don't know that anybody did because we all just usually would just reference the, the 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 page that it was on. So usually local business scheme would go on the home page, so we would just reference the home page URL as the add ID field. Uh, but at some point, I think it was in 20, it might've been 2018 or 2019. I can't remember. Um, but at some point I found an article, I thought it was on the SEMrush blog. So I looked for it. It, it. That article may have been re, re, uh, you know, rewritten or whatever since then. I'm, I'm unable to find the original article and I don't know if it was SEMrush or built visible, but it was anyways, there was an article originally that I saw in 2018 or 2019 that had the first explanation of what an ad ID field was supposed to be for that made sense to me. And it, it basically described an ID, uh, an, ad, an ID field is supposed to reference a unique resource identifier, URI, that validates entity information, right? So essentially, it, it's, it's a way to uh, validate or reinforce, corroborate entity information or information about that element that you are marked, that, that the schema is marking up, right? Uh, so essentially, that's what that is supposed to be. That's what I had read it as. First of all, let me pull this up. This is from Schema App. This is the app that I use. Again, I've just been using this for years. I probably would use something else if I had to start over now, but I'm still using this because this is, and they've got a lot of good help uh, documents, et cetera. But specifically, this is what it's talking about. We will show you the specific identifiers at IDs, aka URIs, it's unique resource identifiers, to define objects in your content as distinct entities with their own properties and relationships to other entities. Once defined, these entities can be linked to a search engine's knowledge graph through structured data like schema markup. Knowledge graphs represent the linking inform of information and data across the web, providing content for search engines as they crawl your website. So what is this telling you? This is telling you that an, ad, an ID, an ad ID, so whatever you designate or reference there, is a way to define objects in your content as distinct entities with their own properties and relationships to other entities that are linked to the search engine's knowledge graph through structured data. And knowledge graphs represent the linking of information across and data across the web. So this is what I talk about when I, when I say the terms like informing the knowledge graph, which is where I got that from Jason Bernard from Calicube Pro. He talks about informing the knowledge graph. I've called it like expanding the entity footprint. But what I think of an ID page is our opportunity as SEOs to at least partially control some of the data that is fed into the semantic web about a particular entity, right? So what I like to, and when I first kind of learned about this and the ID field stuff, like the, what it is supposed to be for, again, 2018, 2019, I can't remember what year it was. It was sometime around then. But when I first read that, I instantly thought, man, we can use this to manipulate SEO, right? And so that's originally when I first read that, that's when I just took an HTML template that I got from Peter Garrity 
uh, for many, many years ago when he was still in the SEO business. Now he's in the e-com business. But uh, when he was in the SEO business, an HTML template, and I just created a single page HTML site that was like literally just information about a local business, right? Uh, something like tree service contract or whatever. And I would use it to embed, do a bunch of embeds. We call it an iframe stack, right? So embed the money site, embed the Google business map, the Google business website. When it, uh, At the time, when I first started doing ID pages, you could embed G sites. You can't with the new ones, but you used to be able to with the old ones. Uh, so just doing a whole bunch of embeds, listing and same as attributes, all of the um, uh, you know branded assets and citations, et cetera, which by the way, this SEMrush blog here talking about it, it says same as here and then it talks about ID. Let me let me just read this briefly. At same as is where you add your social media links, Wikipedia, company pages on review sites and professional association sites, et cetera. Add as many as possible for maximum credibility and context. So uh, again, just just goes to show you that you know using schema properly, and I'm not a schema nerd, guys. I'm I'm certainly not. Like I said, I use it fairly basically uh, on a fairly basic level. Um, I'm not the schema nerd, uh, but then it says in the add ID category, you need to add a unique URL, which is a URI actually, that will be used to identify your company. You may be tempted to use your homepage as a unique identifier for your company. However, the homepage can also be the unique identifier for, for the website schema. Therefore, it is clear to use a single anchor for just this purpose. It doesn't have to be a real page. So a lot of the times you'll see this in, in, in markup, you'll see it'll be domain.com, whatever it is then the hashtag and then ID or hashtag organization, that's fine. But if we can provide a specific URL, the Googlebot will crawl it and go, it's not the same as a link, but it's a reference point. It's like a citation. It's referencing this URI, this unique resource identifier that the Googlebot can then go crawl and verify or validate entity information. So it's our way of being able to partially control data that is fed into the semantic web for a local entity. That's how I view it. And so, again, when I first read that and I, I, I kind of understood it for the first time, I just went and took an HTML template from Peter Garrity um, that I just added all the information about the local business that I could, I, citations, embeds, name, address, phone number, map embed, all that kind of stuff. And then I published it on Amazon S3. So bucket hosting, Amazon S3 bucket hosting, single page HTML website, and started referencing that in the ID page field and structured data. And that became a like focal point for the local entity. Um, and so that is one of the most powerful things that you can do for local SEO, in my opinion, is to build an ID page properly and then use that as a significant linking source. Now, I brought this up just as an example. This is one that I did for TreeCare HQ Winchester. Again, that whole project is still in progress, uh, still in development. It's part of the DHA program. So no links have been built to this. Uh, I think there's one press advantage link to this because it was uh, I embed the ID page in press advantage anyway. Um, it's a one by one pixel embed anyway. It's so it's like a hidden embed, but anyway, this is an ID page that is done the way that I recommend doing them. Now we, I use yaks for this now there. And, uh, like I said, I used to use just an HTML template, very basic that I would edit with notepad plus plus, um, and then upload it to Amazon S3. Now I just use yaks yet another cloud stacking software, Jesper Nissen software to do it, but you can see it's still an S3 bucket, right? So this is an ID page for Tree Care HQ Winchester, and you can see that we just we list entity information. We um, this is the G sheet. So we teach this in the mastermind about how to use the G sheet as a way to kind of consolidate all the branded and supporting assets and citations. Uh, concatenate. I think I said it right this time. I always struggle with that word, but you can concatenate the URLs to keywords and all that, and then you embed that in the ID page. And then this becomes a significant link building target. Again, this one doesn't have many links built to it. I think it's, like I said, it's got two backlinks or two referring domains. Uh, Press Advantage is the only backlink really built to it, if you can take a look at this. Um, but like I said, this can be one of the most powerful kind of parts of a local SEO campaign. Because if you build it right, you do all of your link building, or excuse me, all of your embeds and everything else, optimize it properly. And there's a number of things that you can embed in here, but then you can use this as one of the your main target points for link building. Because it it's going to flow through all these iframes to all of your branded assets, right? So you embed the money site. Um, you can embed. So here's the money site right here. You can embed the Google business assets. If you have them, uh, all of that. And it's just going to power that up if you use this. And remember the way that we host this, and this is on an S3 bucket. That's the way I've always done it. Still do it to that to this day on S3 buckets. You can use other cloud hosts if you'd like. I've always just done it on Amazon. And I'm going to continue to do it on Amazon. 
but this can take this type of a URL can take all kinds of link abuse. <laughs> I, I don't recommend spamming your ID page, guys, because it's part of your entity. So I always recommend, you know, building clean links to it. But because it's an S3 bucket, you could potentially spam it. I'm not telling you to do that, I'm, seriously, because I, I don't spam any entity assets at all, period. Uh, maybe at tier three, you can use bulk spam, but I don't like to do it anywhere near the, uh, the um, tier zero or tier one assets. I don't like to spam those. And this, in all reality, this, I would consider this, I still call this a tier one asset, but it's really part of the tier zero, in my opinion, because it, it can become the entity home um, if done properly. So anyway, hopefully that's clear. I, I really, really like uh, ID pages. I still, to this day, it's a critical part of what we do, uh, even for semantic links. Like, again, this is just, it's standard operating procedure. An ID page get, gets built for every project. So that was a great question. Um, just really quickly, we, I, you know, we do have training in the mastermind for how to uh, build and optimize ID pages and how to set up the hosting in Amazon and all that. It's all part of the SOPs that I provide in the mastermind. However, if anybody's interested in just getting one built, um, again, I just use Yax for it, I'm full transparency, but um, I do sell ID pages at Semantic Master, excuse me, Semantic Links for 59 bucks. So 59 bucks, we'll build it and host it for you. Um, and then now you've got an ID page that you can reference in your ID, your ID field in your structured data. And then again, it becomes a primary link building target that you can be really aggressive with link building to this. And it's going to flow through to all of your other tier zero assets, Google main uh, self-hosted site, Google business website, Google map. If all of those are embedded here and it will power up your other assets too. Like here's the press advantage organization page, right? Here's one of the cloud pages from part of a cloud stack, what I call the brand builder. That's over here. We've got the Google map embed down here. We've got other links, which I know followed intentionally, but these are two other pages on the site or service pages on the, the same site, et cetera. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do here. David, I think you said something about one ninja trick for this ID page. Yes, I, I saw your comment and I'm going to reply to that. Yeah, please. What's the ninja trick? Um, if you can reply back, I'd love to know what the ninja trick is. But anyways, guys, again, ID pages, there you go. I'll post this in chat. Um, not here to pitch you on my service. I'm just saying if you don't feel like going through the process of doing it yourself, there you go. There's an opportunity, an option. Okay. Great question. Moving on. 